Welcome students. We're going to talk just a little bit about arguments. Uh, I like this. It says the purpose of arguments should not be victory but progress. And this is so true. Um, at the end of your argument in this particular class, you are going to sort of come to that. So the victory is in the outcome, the conclusion that summarizes your paper's main points where you go ahead and propose a solution to whatever problem you've discussed, whatever position you've taken, uh, and predi or predict something or recommend something. So you're actually progressing uh, from an argument to a recommendation or conclusion or prediction. So let's talk about that just a little bit. So let's have a look at the basic outline components and this will transport you back to English 10 or 100 so or 101 depending on which one you're in. So introductory paragraph uh, as you know you always have one of those and uh, it's always a good idea to think about the context of your position that you're arguing for. For example in this section you might include background information of the issue that you're going to discuss. Uh, in an explanation or controversy that's surrounding it uh, and things such as that nature and of course your thesis statement will always go toward the end of that paragraph. Um, now I believe that you can do better than this but this happens to be from a uh, Simon & Schuster uh, book that uh, this was adapted from and this was an example that was in there and we're going to talk a little bit more about stronger thesis statements later but uh, this one is okay. The production sale and possession of assault weapons for private citizens should be banned in the U.S. and of course uh, that is one of the hot topics of the day and has been for a while so uh, there you go. There's there's an example. So let's look at the body. So the section of your paper gives the reader the basic information he or she needs. And in your case, for this essay, you need to have three claims. So when you think about, here's the thesis statement, I want at least three claims. And since your paper is rather long, uh, you'll want, you may even need more than that. So if you think in terms of structure, um, you may put the background information which I, I believe the background information is part of the introduction and it even says that here uh, but it can be its own section if it's relevant and important to the issue for example if you were doing something on say uh, vaccines then you might want to include a whole uh, depending on which position you were taking uh, on safety of vaccines then you might want to put a whole section in here on uh, past research into vaccines or something of that nature to sort of uh, acclimate the audience to what you're about to discuss. So let's look at the evidence. So reasons or evidence to support your claim. All the evidence that you present in the section should support your position. Um, there are times when students sort of get off on a tangent and so what I always recommend is that students sit down, make a sentence outline, very simple sentence outline, thesis at the top, point one in sentence form, point two in sentence form, point three in sentence form, and then what your conclusion would be, which would include some type of solution, a call to action, a recommendation of some sort, um, to sort of answer the, or even a prediction at times, uh, to answer the so what question at the end. So why did you take this position on this issue? So um, that gives you a little bit of idea of how this is organized so if you do the if you do the claims or the um the sentence outline then you can simply go back through and now that you have your outline you can go seek out the sources in each point so if you have your thesis statement uh that vaccines are basically unsafe and then you have uh you know number one cases of autism that may be related whatever point you're using there then you can go in in your preliminary pre-writing stage and look for a source that supports your first one look for a source that supports your second one look for a source that supports your third one and of course you'll do your counter argument which is the opposite point of view and you'll get a source to support that one so you've already used four at least in that um and the requirement may vary according to class but uh, it's usually around six sources that are required so please see the rubric on that so if you look at this you've got a claim keeping salt assault weapons out of private citizens hands can lower the um, 
lower the increasing occurrences of barbaric public slangs. Now I would I would offer here, and the reason I like this example is so that I can point these things out. The saying barbaric is um is very strong language. And so if you're trying to pull somebody over to your side, say because that's really the reason that you do an argument essay, you're trying to convince someone of something. So as you're doing this, try to use um, less provo provoking words. So if I were not in agreement with you, but I was on the fence, that you could convince me. And you you sort of have to use your own judgment in that. Uh, so in this, the evidence that one might use is law firm murders, Columbine school shootings, University of Virginia incident. And so... Um, some of these may have come out of the same source. They may have come out of one or two different sources. And these are all in support of this. So, of course, this is the outline format instead of the narrative. Uh, but you can see how that is set up. So what I was suggesting is that you go down, you sit down, and write your first point that supports your thesis, just like this one is. Um, what type of evidence, even, that you might use before you start researching. And then go down to your second point and tell about... Uh, it. So here we've got the ban on assault weapons is backed heavily by public opinion, major organizations, and even law force, law enforcement. Um, and then you can see sort of the evidence here. So 12% favor ban, organizational endorsements, National Sheriff's Association um, of police chiefs, and then you can see the third one, the monetary and human costs incurred by crimes committed in assault weapons are too great to ignore. Of course, you can use more academic language here. This is really just an example of a preliminary outline. Um, <clears throat> and then you go down and there's a there's evidence here. Uh, 10,561 murders in 1990 by handguns. A study of 131 injured uh, patients. Medical expenses paid by public funds. And these are all uh, just to prompt the writer uh to say, okay, this fits in this category. Now I can go back through and start writing about it. So then when you address the opposite side, you are actually saying, okay, while I realize that you believe this, you're saying this to the reader, this is true. So you're, you're acknowledging, you're validating the reader uh, if they have a different opinion than what you're writing about and telling them that, you understand that, but this is the case and that your argument is more valid than that one. So then you've got your conclusion and the conclusion can end many different ways, uh, but it should at least bring the essay to a logical end. It should explain the importance of your issue in the larger context. How can this be applied? Um, your conclusion should reiterate why the topic's worth caring about. It's the so what answer. So you get to the end of your essay, so why did I discuss this? Um, that's what you want to, to talk about at the end. And some arguments propose solutions or make predictions on the future of the topic. You also want to show your reader uh, what would happen if your argument is or not believed or acted upon as you believe it should be. So if you've decided that vaccines uh, are dangerous and you've supported all of that and you've gone through your whole research, at the end you can tell why if action isn't taken on this issue, then this will be the case. So it's kind of a... Um, Hey, let's let's make let's make a change because if if we don't, there's a real danger of this happening. So, I hope that this sort of gave you that that review that you would have had in your uh, you know for your argument paper in lower level English classes, and sort of gives you that refresher on the components of it. Now, keep in mind that your paper is is not a very short one, so it wouldn't be a standard. Hey, I've got three paragraphs, three points. Points. Um, in this essay, if you only have three points, you will definitely have more than one paragraph per point uh, simply because of the length of the paper. So I suggest that you do more. You want to fully develop those points that you make in this, um, in this essay so that you're really supporting your, your point. And remember that um, anything that you do, you'll want to make sure that all of your sources are credible. Um, you you have to make sure that the ones that you choose are within a certain time frame. Typically seven years is a pretty good one. Some teachers uh, require five. I ref 
I require seven. So at least within the past seven years, you also want to make sure that uh, whoever you're choosing, the author is credible. They, you know, they're an expert in the field or they, they've done extensive research on something and they have to have their name on the source, uh, unless it's a government document, which is a little bit different. Um, also, you want to make sure that anything that you use in this paper that it has a title. There are things out there that you find and they don't have titles. Also keep in mind that I do not allow Wikipedia. Uh, that is is not always regulated well. The facts aren't always there uh, the way that they should be. Although there is there can be some good information that can lead you to original sources in other places. So uh, keep all of that in mind as you're working on this and uh, please contact me if you have any questions. I'll be posting a few more items to help. Uh, so I hope that you will have a look at those, uh, you know, to help you guide you through your essay. Thank you very much. Have a, have a nice day.